they have lost control and are about to crash the ship. So the Jackson Hole meeting just concluded and Jerome Powell has reached a conclusion we had known all along. Inflation is still a gigantic problem and it will be a long time before we reach the promised land of 2%. We are caught in this economic twilight zone where the US economy seems to be getting stronger and stronger even though the Fed has been hiking rates from 0 to 5.5%. America is slated to grow even faster than China. And according to the Federal Reserve, US GDP for Q3 is estimated to hit an insane 5.9%. This is a crazy growth rate that tells us the US economy is somehow burning hot. There's no way a recession is coming. Bidenomics is working and all of us are dead wrong. And if you break down the awesome forecast for Q3, it seems that everything is up. Consumer spending is doing great and residential construction is rising. But is this really the case or are we all getting bamboozled here? And this is at a time when Europe is in a recession and China, the second biggest economy, is dropping its consumption. We all know it doesn't really make sense. But it doesn't really matter what we think. All that matters is the Federal Reserve is believing the smoke and mirrors. And this is terrible news because the US economy is just as fragile as the rest of the world and Jerome Powell is moving to push it off a cliff. In our lead story today, Fed Chair Powell calls inflation too high and warns that we are prepared to raise rates further. And we have been calling for higher rates for a long time here and we could actually end the year at 6%. But the big question is if the economy is actually resilient or if there's something artificial boosting this growth and I suspect the Fed knows what's really going on but they have no choice but to look at the metrics at the surface level. And we need to take power at his word because he has not deviated from the grand plan. His agenda has always been to destroy demand and to accomplish that, he has to crash the economy into a recession. Just listen to Powell's final line in the Jackson Hole speech. We will keep at it until the job is done. Guys, please realize what this means. Powell is channeling the spirit of Paul Volcker and he won't rest until inflation reaches 2% or lower. And I don't think the economy can take much of a further beating without a collapse happening. And the only way to crush inflation is through deflation. And we gotta realize why the economy is still standing. We had the fastest rate hike in modern history. Powell has hiked 11 times, bringing us from 0 to 5.5%. However, inflation is still sticky, the labor market is still hot, and the US government spending is not going to stop. And we must address each of this because it's supremely important you understand what the Fed is seeing. And when it comes to inflation, the number is still disgustingly high. Remember what the Fed is truly tracking? They aren't bothered about CPI inflation. They are concerned about core inflation. And here's what Powell said. The lower monthly readings for core inflation in June and July were welcome, but two months of good data are only the beginning of what it will take to build confidence that inflation is moving down sustainably towards our goal. Looking at US core inflation, it has been dropping for 5 months straight, but the latest drop has only been 0.1% and isn't definitive enough. Powell needs to see a continued trend of inflation crashing, but it isn't happening fast enough. The labor market is also showing enormous resilience that signals consumers still have money. And when people still have money, they will keep spending which keeps inflation high and this is where Powell shows his true intentions. His mission is to drive unemployment up. Job openings have declined substantially without increasing unemployment. And this is an unusual result that is freaking the Federal Reserve out. If you're Powell, this is what you are seeing. In the latest jobs report, July has gained 187,000 new jobs. And this might be lower than the previous few months, but it is still higher than June. The unemployment rate is also at an all-time low of 3.5%. What type of signal does this send to the Fed? When we throw in the earnings growth, it adds to the narrative of a strong economy. July has seen a 4.4% growth in hourly earnings, which means workers are earning more. People still have money to throw around, and this spending is going to keep inflation high. At least that is the story being sold to power. And we know that the jobs being created are mostly part-time positions, Plus, the earnings growth is nothing compared to inflation. People are still spending their dollars to tread water and stay afloat. But it doesn't matter what we think. 
The consensus is a robust economy and demand is booming. Her market expectations are already pricing in a 55% chance of a rate hike coming by November this year. And so far, they have been very accurate with their predictions. So don't be surprised if rates jump by another 25 or even 50 basis points by the end of the year. But can we survive higher for longer? Every time the Federal Reserve hikes, it unleashes a chain of events that affects every single benchmark rate in the real economy. When the Fed funds rise, everything from mortgage rates to credit card interest flies up as well. And this is going to crush the average consumer. We know the US economy is run on credit. It is fueled by borrowed money. So if the cost of borrowing flies up, we will see spending dry up. Interest rates on credit cards have already flown up to over 20% in July this year. This is from 16% back in March 2022. It is now more expensive to swipe that card to buy stuff and this is going to backfire really soon. The Fed just revealed a shocking truth. US credit card debt has hit a record $1 trillion. American consumers are facing increasing costs and financial insecurity. So if you have to use your credit cards to buy food and stay afloat, you are just one crisis away from the disaster, guys. The debt levels are now higher than in 2008 or 2020 just before the recession. And as the Fed continues to hike rates, this debt will snowball and people have two choices, right? Either they reduce consumption or they keep rolling from one card to another until they eventually default and both options are disastrous. And if you need any more confirmation that the consumer is getting walloped, is getting crushed, Bank of America has issued an urgent warning. They have found that more people are pulling money out of their 401ks, which is their retirement savings plan. This has increased by 10% in 2023. And if more people need to dip into their future retirement savings to survive today, you know the economy is in deep trouble. But it gets worse. This could be the final nail in the coffin. According to the Fed, once again, Americans have burned through more than 90% of the excess savings they amassed back in 2020 and 2021. Remember all the money saved when people stayed home during the lockdowns? Well, that money will dry up by the end of September. So just imagine if power hikes again, the consumers will get crushed. Every loan they have will get more expensive and their spending is going to crater. People on the street are going to be in financial pain. But let's talk about the elephant in the room, commercial real estate CREs. You've probably heard it a thousand times, but it is likely the next domino to fall. In a story by Bloomberg, landlords with $1.2 trillion of debt face rising default risks. The credit crunch is getting worse and landlords who are over leveraged are going to face hell, especially when the Fed hikes further. By the end of 2025, over $620 billion of CRE loans is going to mature and this means the loans have to be rolled over to higher interest rates or a default is going to happen. And of this risky debt, half of which comes from office buildings and this is a ticking time bomb because office values have tumbled by 30% over the past 18 months so landlords are effectively underwater and they are sitting on a huge loss. It doesn't take a genius to see why CREs could take down the financial system. If the Fed keeps rates higher for longer, landlords are going to be bleeding a ton of money. Their revenues are going down because people are either working from home full-time or hitting back maybe two or three days a week. There's simply no need to lease office space anymore. You're simply going to scale back. So landlords have more incentives to just throw the keys back to the bank and just walk away, right? A default might be better than to keep servicing the loan and you can't really blame them. And this is bad because the banks are going to have to take a punch to the guard. They will have to auction the buildings off at a terrible price and the banks will be selling into a falling market and eating a big loss. Plus, with the recent banking downgrades, Wall Street can't endure any more rate hikes. They will have a liquidity problem and the Fed is pushing them towards the breaking point. And it isn't just the regionals. The big banks are also worried about collapse in commercial real estate. And check this out. JP Morgan is trying to sell their $350 million loan on a HSBC tower. And you know it's serious when they're offering cheap financing to the buyers. And this means only one thing. The bank is anticipating higher interest rates and more stress on the banking sector. So JP Morgan wants to raise liquidity now. They want cold hard cash. And I'm not asking us to shed a tear for the banks. But if they take huge losses from CREs, 
they are going to jack up the cost of borrowing for everything or even worse, the banks stop lending money which will dry up credit and whether we like it or not, we are going to feel the impacts if the banks take a hit. So the strength we are seeing in the US economy is artificial. It is propped up by endless deficit spending which is obscuring the GDP numbers. And to finance this, Yellen has to flood the market with bonds which is causing bond yields to hit all-time highs. The US 10-year yield has now hit a 15-year high, bringing us back to the 2008 levels just before the big crash. In fact, we have broken out from the era of falling treasury yields. We are now in the danger zone and yields are not going to come down anytime soon. And the market is going to wake up and realize bond yields aren't going to come down. The Fed can't cut rates because the government is still spending money like drunken sailors. For Q3 this year, the Treasury is going to borrow at least $1 trillion, which is $270 billion higher than previously announced. But that's not all. For Q4 ending December, Yellen will borrow an additional $850 billion, which I believe will be much more when the time comes. It will probably hit a $1 trillion. President Biden is also moving to raise $40 billion in funding for Ukraine, disaster relief, and to secure the border. And this is money that America has to borrow into existence. So bond yields are going to stay high. And the longer bond yields stay high, the more money is going to leave the markets and flee to treasury bonds. If we reach 6% or even 7% risk-free, it makes no sense for the money to stay in the stock market when the government is paying you an insane return for doing nothing at all. So the Federal Reserve has confirmed this with the Fed actually giving us a clear warning that rates are going higher. We're going to have at least one more rate hike and any cut will be delayed. They're expecting inflation to only reach 2% by the end of 2025, probably 2026, which means two more years of elevated interest rates. So we have to prepare for a world of higher rates. And will the market survive 6%? I really don't know. But the odds for a crash are now higher than ever. And the only way for rates to go down is the catastrophic collapse or when Congress finally stops spending. And what are the odds of that? So let me know what you think in the comments below. How high will interest rates go? And has the Federal Reserve really lost control? Let me know in the comments below. Stay safe. Be sure to smash the like button and subscribe as we navigate through these crazy times.